Fantasy. Direct flight to Denver, that's correct. Chicago? Direct flight to uh, Chicago. Minneapolis? In Minneapolis, we have a direct flight. Detroit. Five airlines, 25 daily flights in a city not much bigger than Columbia. Then why it could soon be harder to file a medical malpractice lawsuit in Missouri. And does public transportation lead to a healthier lifestyle? KOMU 8 News at 10 starts now. From Studio 8A, coverage you can count on in high definition. This is KOMU 8 News at 10. Next week, mid-Missouri travelers will head in a different direction if they're flying out of the Columbia Regional Airport. Good evening, everyone. I'm Danny Spiewak. And I'm Jim Rick. Thanks for joining us. Delta is departing. American is arriving. Instead of flying to Memphis or Atlanta, you'll be flying to Chicago or Dallas. Tonight in this 8 on Your Side report, we take you to a regional airport 230 miles from Columbia. Keyword regional. Another keyword partnership. Welcome to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where the temperature is too below. So it's not normally this cold. No, it's not normally this cold. So cold, the Chamber of Commerce can't control the weather. I can't today, but, you know, stay another day and it'll get better. Cedar Rapids, where the Eagles fly downtown and five airlines fly at the regional airport. I think the most important thing to understand about a regional airport is it's a reflection of your regional economy. And the airport is a critical way for us to, for our businesses to get to their customers. And Dee Baird is the director at the Cedar Rapids Metro Economic Alliance. This didn't happen overnight. For a quarter of a century, this airport has met the needs of the community, particularly the business community. There are often times at which we're recruiting a company or we'll help it, we're helping a company expand, and we've got to bring in the airport director. It's really tough, especially for rural, smaller communities. His name is Tim Bradshaw. It's the business community that supports any air service in the community. And the air service in this community is served with 25 daily flights. So how did Cedar Rapids, a city just a bit larger than Columbia, attract five major airlines? I liken it to industrial business recruitment. It's no different from going to a company and trying to get them to bring their, their jobs and their companies to your community. You have to sell them on the community and tell them that the market is there. There, along the banks of the Cedar River. Here are three differences between Columbia and Cedar Rapids. It's colder here. It's a lot colder in Cedar Rapids than it is in Columbia. The airport is self-supportive. It receives no type of hotel or motel tax. And number three, the city of Cedar Rapids is not real big into offering airlines incentives. We've come close to that, but we didn't actually pull the trigger. Uh, we've been fortunate to be able to to offer good marketing packages, good incentives within the really the, the uh, auspices of the management of the airport and not do things that, that require the city or um, other major business donors to get involved in the incentive game. She says guarantees don't result in long-term partnerships. We've watched airports, our competitors, do those big incentives and then eventually lose the airline. So we're not convinced that that's what um, the right strategy is. Her strategy for Mid-Missouri? You first have to, you have to understand your current assets. So which employers are in your area and what do they need as it relates to the airport? Then you have to work a strategy with your management, the management of your airport and your economic development team so that it advances the work and the needs of the business community. And if you can do that, you can sell your story to the airlines. Cedar Rapids is full of huge employers ranging from avionics to breakfast cereal. The companies rely on the airlines and the airlines rely on the city's diversified economy. We work with our largest employers to meet with the airlines to discuss the service. And if you've got a large employer like that in the region, they need to be at the table. Mark and Beverly work for a large Cedar Rapids employer. There's been a lot of things, initiatives that have been done, you know, in some of the local communities to start new factories like the wind energy plant. And when hearing about Columbia's small airport. Uh, that would be really inconvenient, and especially it would be inconvenient for, you know, attracting any new businesses of any size. This airport is attracting a lot of business with flights to Chicago, Detroit, Minneapolis, Atlanta, Dallas, Denver, and beyond. You have to have a community where people want to live. Not just the people that have been living there for the last 25, 30 years, 
but people that haven't lived in your community you have to be attractive so people want to move to your town. So, you know, my, my suggestion is uh, you have to reinvest in yourself, and I hope you do. Everyone we interviewed in this story was surprised. Columbia, a growing community with a major university, was having problems attracting airline service. They all agreed with the proper partnership. American Airlines can turn a profit in Columbia with or without the guarantees. And once the profits begin, American might add flights or another airline might begin service. From a downtown parking proposal to money for the Avenue of Columns project tonight, the City Council of Columbia has a full agenda. Earlier today, members discussed expanding public transportation. KOMU8's Gina Cook is live at City Hall with more. Gina. The council meeting just ended inside these chambers, but earlier members discussed a new study that looked at the possible effects of expanding Columbia's public transportation. The study says that an expansion would improve the public's access to health care, school, work, and even food. Some council members say those are good benefits, but the city may not have room in its budget to expand the bus system. But some Columbia residents think greater transportation op options are needed. If we add on more things, it will go broke faster. And when it goes broke, then the buses stop. If you have greater availability, then there could be greater use of the public transportation. And public transportation is always a good thing. Councilman Kespel did mention one possibility for expansion is to utilize public buses as school buses to, to save money. He says the city council looked into a similar situation in Phoenix, Arizona that has successfully done that, but no decisions on expansion will be made yet. Reporting live in Columbia, Gina Cook, CAMU 8 News. Gina, thank you very much. We are also watching these items from City Council tonight. The Council is currently discussing giving nearly $219,000 from tax credit revenue for improvements of Avenue of the Columns streetscape project along 8th Street. Along with the reconstruction funding, the Council is also talking about the proposal from the City's Parking Task Force, which would increase the number of electronic meters in downtown Columbia. Right now, the majority of the 1,800 parking meters in downtown Columbia only accept coins. Good day again today in uh, mid-Missouri. We topped out with a temperature at 53 degrees. That was at about 1 o'clock this afternoon. Ever since then, a cold front has been moving through and temperatures have been dropping. Variably cloudy tonight. We have some areas of open sky and some high clouds drifting into mid-Missouri. Check the latest numbers. We're at 31 in Jefferson City. At the lake, it's 30, 27 in Columbia, 23 in Macon. Now, We'll get her back, I promise. Oh. Poor kid. She Underneath it all, she was 